Have you ever wondered what it would be like to stumble upon alien life? Will we find them knocking on our door? Or will we accidentally intercept their cosmic TV signals? Today, let's dive into how we might discover alien life by peeking into the mysterious world of exoplanet K218b. Throughout history, we've imagined our first encounter with aliens would be up close and personal. Either they come to us or we go to them. Maybe we'd even catch some weird alien signals floating through space. But despite all the hype, we've never gotten that clear we are not alone moment. Remember the wow signal or the mysterious object Oumuamua? Those sparked our imaginations but ultimately had natural explanations. Bummer, right? But here's the twist. Our first glimpse of alien life might not come from spaceships or signals, but from tiny variations in the colors of alien sunsets. Yep, you heard that right. These subtle shifts seen from hundreds of light years away could be the clue we've been waiting for. And the latest suspect? An exoplanet called K218b. Let's dive into what makes this planet so exciting and why it could be our first peek at extraterrestrial life. If you're enjoying this dive into alien possibilities, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on our latest cosmic adventures. Two engine start, one zero, and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with Kepler on a search for planets Chamber in some way like our own. Burnier engine, chamber pressures are building. Groundlet solid motors are building in chamber pressure. Increasing at this time, the pressure's looking good. When exploring other planets, the main goal is straightforward. Find planets that look like Earth and can keep water nice and liquid on the surface. That's our sweet spot for finding life. Over the past decade, we've sent out telescopes like the Kepler mission to scout for Earth-like planets orbiting nearby stars. The results? Over 4,000 Earth-like exoplanets were found and catalogued in the Milky Way. And as technology gets better, the list of cool discoveries keeps growing. Enter the K218 system, discovered in 2015 and only 124 light years away. That might sound far, but it's practically next door in cosmic terms. At the center is K218a, a red M dwarf star, smaller and cooler than our sun, with a surface temperature of about 6,200 degrees Fahrenheit or 3,427 degrees Celsius. This star has two planets orbiting it, K218b and K218c. And how do we know so much about them? It's all thanks to the sharp observations of the Kepler telescope. Now, if you're wondering how we know so much from just staring at a star, here's the trick. We can measure how much the star dims when a planet passes in front of it. This is called transit photometry. That dip in brightness tells us the planet's size. By timing those transits, we figure out the planet's orbit. To get its mass, we measure the slight wobble of the star as the planet's gravity tugs on it. This wobble gives us the planet's mass thanks to fancy science called the Doppler shift. Science is pretty cool, right? Using this data, we know K218b is about 8.6 times heavier than Earth and 2.6 times bigger in diameter. Its orbit is super close to its star, closer than Mercury is to our Sun. But don't worry, it's not all scorched and dry like Mercury, since their star is a red dwarf. K218b sits just within its star's habitable zone, aka the Goldilocks zone, where it's not too hot or cold, but just right for water to stay liquid. Even though K218b orbits much closer to its star, that star is way fainter than our sun, making the conditions potentially suitable for oceans. So will there be life there? Well, its proximity to the star is key. Depending on how much light it gets, K218b might have liquid water, one of the most essential ingredients for life as we know it. Did you know that Uranus and Neptune 
might be having diamonds rain down from their skies? Scientists believe that the extreme pressure on these gas giants could turn carbon into diamonds, creating some truly dazzling space weather. So why do we think there might be life on this planet? Well, it's because we were able to analyze its atmosphere and composition. How did astronomers figure out K218b's composition? They combined its mass and size to determine its density. Since its density is less than half of Earth's, K218b is likely made up of a rocky core surrounded by lighter materials. This causes the planet to puff up, making its eclipse during transit appear larger. Think of it like a cosmic marshmallow floating around its star. But here's where it gets juicier. In 2019, scientists pointed the Hubble Space Telescope at K218b, hoping to get a sneak peek at its atmosphere. Directly seeing the planet is a no-go because, you know, the star is way brighter. Instead, they studied the star's light as it passed through the planet's atmosphere. Just like Earth's atmosphere filters sunlight, a planet's atmosphere can filter the starlight passing through it, leaving clues behind. Here's where things get interesting. During one of K218b's transits, scientists detected water vapor in its atmosphere. Yep, this planet might have water floating around up there, skyrocketing it to fame in the exoplanet world. Wait a minute, if we're finding water on planets 124 light years away, could that mean space mermaids might exist? I'm just saying the universe is full of surprises. But hold your horses, we're not ready to pop the champagne just yet. The Hubble telescope can only see a tiny portion of the infrared spectrum, meaning we could miss even more water absorption features. But this finding is just the first step. That's why more studies are needed to confirm just how much water there is and to figure out if K218b is more like a super Earth that could support life or just a mini Neptune with a hydrogen rich atmosphere. Enter one of the coolest telescopes in the universe, the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST for short. This bad boy is designed to detect wavelengths 10 times longer than the Hubble Space Telescope can see. That's like comparing a magnifying glass to a full-blown microscope. The JWST dives deep into the infrared spectrum, which means it can pick up on many different molecular signatures that we've never seen before. What we have uh, found in this present discovery is that for the first time, we have detected carbon-bearing molecules in the atmosphere of a habitable zone planet. Now, this has never happened before. This is the first time in history that this has been possible, uh, thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope. And the fact that we are able to do that in a habitable zone planet is already a major technological achievement. In September 2023, JWST made headlines when astronomers used it to measure the atmosphere of K218b, armed with the near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph and the near-infrared camera, JWST identified methane and carbon dioxide in K218b's atmosphere. Now you might think, so what? We've got CO2 on Mars and methane on Titan. Uh, the molecule methane, for example, has been sought after for a long time, a little over a decade now, we have been, as a field, trying to look for uh, hydrocarbons and methane in particular in various low temperature planets, but never found it. And this is actually called the missing methane problem, and for the first time we are seeing it. Now, let's talk water, or the lack of it. JWST couldn't find any water in the upper atmosphere of K218b. Weird, right? Especially since Hubble thought it had found water there before. I know, I know. Cue the disappointment. But don't go tuning out just yet. Things are about to get spicy. JWST said, hold on, there might be something even juicier here than water. We did detect a molecule at a tentative level uh, called dimethyl sulfide. This molecule is unique to life on Earth. There is no other way this molecule is produced on Earth. So it has been predicted 
to be a very good biosignature uh, in exoplanets, in habitable exoplanets, including Haitian worlds. So why does dimethyl sulfide or DMS matter? Well, it's like a cosmic fingerprint for life. This molecule, known as dimethyl sulfide, is something our ocean-dwelling friends, particularly phytoplankton, produce on Earth. The big deal, DMS might be a sign of life. Yep, that's right, alien life. Dimethyl sulfide is a colorless, flammable liquid with a smell that screams cabbage. It's essential in Earth's sulfur cycle, mainly produced by those tiny phytoplankton. When DMS is released into the air, it helps tiny water droplets come together to form clouds, kind of like how you might see fog on a chilly morning. So, DMS is like a little helper in making clouds, which then affects the weather on Earth. But here's where it gets juicy. Detecting DMS on a faraway exoplanet, like K218b, could mean we've found some marine life similar to Earth's phytoplankton. Imagine a whole other world with its version of plankton floating around. But before you start planning the welcome party for our alien neighbors, hold your space horses. Detecting DMS on a faraway exoplanet isn't exactly a sure bet there's life there. The molecule's spectral signature can easily be overshadowed by other gases in the planet's atmosphere. Plus, DMS might be produced through processes we haven't discovered yet. Before you start throwing alien-themed parties, let's make sure we're not getting ahead of ourselves. Right now, DMS detection on K218b is at what scientists call the One Sigma level, which is science speak for maybe, but let's not get too excited just yet. To be sure about a finding, scientists aim for a Five Sigma level, meaning they're really sure. It also means there's a chance of it being just random noise only once in 50,000 times. At the One Sigma level, there's a 32% chance it could be a false alarm. So while the DMS detection on K218b is intriguing, it's not quite a slam dunk yet. We need more data before we start planning a vacation to K218b. Studying K218b's atmosphere is like peeling an onion. There's much more beneath the surface. We're talking about building atmospheric models that consider everything from chemical composition and pressure to the star's radiation and how gases interact with the planet's surface. It's like creating a super detailed recipe to understand how different ingredients mix and react. If we spot a lot of methane and CO2 high up in the atmosphere, we must figure out how those gases got there. The combination of methane and our detection of carbon dioxide and non-detections of other important molecules like ammonia, for example, or carbon monoxide, that atmospheric composition tells us that of all the possible ways to explain it, the most plausible way is that there is an ocean underneath. It's very hard to get that sort of composition otherwise. So this is what leads us to think that this is a, a very possible Haitian world, uh, which are basically planets with uh, planet-wide oceans and hydrogen-rich atmospheres, which have just the right conditions on the surface to be able to host life uh, under conditions similar to what we see on Earth. Also, here's a fun twist. Ammonia, which we'd expect to see in planets with lots of hydrogen, is missing from K218b's spectrum. This absence could mean a huge ocean is soaking up ammonia, leaving the atmosphere pretty clean. Or maybe there's another explanation we haven't thought of yet. So a, a common question uh, that gets asked is, could this planet support life? Uh, currently, uh, we can't say that for sure. Uh, we need more observations. So let's ponder if K218b's atmosphere could support life. The pressure and temperature crank up as you dive deeper into a planet's atmosphere. On K218b, the pressure might go so high that water blurs the lines between liquid and gas. At extreme depths, water could freeze into solid ice, forming a thick barrier between the ocean and the planet's rocky interior. 
This ice layer might block the flow of essential elements and suppress plate tectonics, making it harder for life-sustaining processes to happen. On Earth, life thrives in places like deep sea vents or tidal pools, where there's a mix of stable conditions and energy sources. K218b's current model doesn't quite match these ideal habitats. So what's up next in our interstellar investigation? JWST is about to look closer at K218b, our potential alien hotspot. We've been using JWST's nearest and near cam instruments to peer into the near-infrared wavelengths, like using night vision goggles for the cosmos, but with an upgrade. We're talking about wavelengths from 1 to 5 microns, like seeing in super low light conditions. But here's where it gets cool. JWST's Mid-Infrared Interferometer, or MIRI, can see out to 28 microns. That's like switching from night vision goggles to a high-def infrared camera. This part of the spectrum is crucial for spotting molecules like methane and dimethyl sulfide. If these molecules show up, it could be a massive clue about the presence of life. So what's the plan? We're waiting several times for K218b to pass in front of its star. By next year, we should have a better idea if DMS is hanging out on K218b and who knows what other surprises might pop up in the mid-infrared. Even if K218b turns out to be a cosmic flop with no signs of life, we're still making huge strides in space science. We've got thousands of exoplanets to explore and the best infrared telescope ever made, so we're on the edge of discovering new secrets about our galaxy. Why are we here? Are we alone? These are questions everyone, almost everyone, can be found asking at some point in their life. You go into the night sky, you wonder, are we alone? Stick around, because our next cosmic adventure is just as out of this world. We're diving into planets that might be more habitable than Earth. Ever wondered about potential new neighbors in the galaxy? Check out this video where we explore Gliese 667c and its intriguing planets that could be our future cosmic home.